20 years down the drain. I discovered this topic through watching YouTube videos and reading postings that were similar to my scenario. I decided I'd give it a go. I am 48 years old and will have been married for 20 years in January. A little background. I come from a damaged, aggressive, and alcoholic family. Trust is essential to my life, as are structure, safety, and provision. My wife and I met while working at a restaurant. I was a boss, and she was a five-year-old employee. Her parents died in a vehicle accident when she was a child, and she was raised by her uncle. She suffers from severe abandonment problems, is exceedingly emotional, and may get violently enraged in certain circumstances. She is mainly kind and loving, and the love and support I've given her over the past 20 years has helped to calm her spirit and wrath. I considered her incredibly beautiful when we initially began working together, but I didn't pursue anything since I was her boss. I had a part-time job, bartending, and she would come down to the bar to flirt with me. I didn't encourage her conduct, but I was always polite when I said no. She came in one night about a month into her stay, marched straight up to me, leaped into my arms, and began making out with me. I didn't turn her away this time, because who would? Here came a stunning, youthful, full-of-energy girl who was definitely drawn to me. I just terminated a five-year marriage that had been a tremendous mistake, and I had a small kid. I had recently returned to the scene, was in good shape, and was enjoying the company of numerous ladies. Who was I to pass someone like this up? We spent that night together, and the following day I informed her that if she wanted us to continue seeing one other, she would have to resign her job at the restaurant. That day, she gave her notice. We were together almost every day after that. She practically moved in with me, and a week later we went and grabbed all her belongings from where she was residing. I stopped seeing anybody else and had to reject down one of the other females when she came into my office and told me she needed to. When I informed her I couldn't since I was in a relationship, she answered, no one would know. I told her, I would, and she walked away. My present wife and I had a few minor conflicts early on, and there were a lot of the dating games that young people play. I thought I was too old for all of that nonsense. So one night, after she had elected to stay out with her friends rather than come home with me. I went to our apartment, packed all of her, and left it on the doorstep. I sat on the sofa, waiting for her to get home. I noticed her friend's car's headlights as they dropped her off, and I saw her go up to the door via the peephole. She stood there, paralyzed, staring at all of her baggage in front of her. When I opened the door and saw tears running down her cheeks, I uttered the following, I'm becoming too old for these games. I am standing directly in front of you, and you must make a decision. You must love my daughter and look after me, and I will always look after you. If you can accomplish that, gather your belongings and come inside. We met when she came in, and we've been together ever since. I was definitely not ready to be the guy I am now during the first few years of our marriage. I had two DUI and cheated on her four or five times. She had no idea about the infidelities until the final DUI when she told me I love you more than everything in the world, but I can't do this. I'll have to leave you if you get another DUI. That was the end of my drinking and extramarital affairs. After that, I was completely committed. I spent the next two decades establishing my profession. I accepted jobs all over the state, and we had to relocate an hour and a half away from home for a job. My wife just could not do it. We had a kid by then, and she was feeling too alone so I relocated her to town and began traveling to work for seven years. It was hard, but I did it to support my family, therefore I got through it. Eventually, a position with my firm became available in our hometown and I accepted it. Later, I was hired by a private owner to handle these enterprises, and then another private group hired me and granted me an ownership stake in one of their divisions. After 15 years of working together, I had achieved the zenith of my professional career, my family was doing well, and I was earning more money than I had ever made. My wife wanted to return to school to continue her degree, and I felt that was great since I was so busy at work. Work had become somewhat poisonous, and the atmosphere had begun to wear me down. My connection with my wife deteriorated greatly as I started to wall off and internalize. We were seldom intimate, having just a few times a year and she had a hyperactive libido. 
I was gloomy and unapproachable, and I was really dying on the inside. While I was at work, my wife began to request that we go hang out with some of our friends. I didn't like it, but I was dead inside at the time and simply said okay to everything she wanted to do. It was simpler for her to go than it was for me to confront her dissatisfaction with me when I returned home from a soul-crushing job situation. Her trips got more regular, but I was okay with it since she was spending time with folks I'd known for 20 years. I had great faith in everyone in the group with whom she was socializing. I know I'm a moron. About a year ago, I realized that this work atmosphere was no longer going to work for me. I was frequently at conflicts with the partners, and we couldn't even communicate anymore. When I began to reflect on my life, I realized that I had blocked off everything I had ever appreciated about myself. To offer comfort and security for my family, I had transformed myself into a soulless ATM. I was devoid of feeling. Don't get me wrong, there were wonderful occasions as a family throughout those two decades, but I felt empty as an individual. I determined that when my wife finished her studies, I would search for another method to generate money and attempt to reclaim part of myself. It was at this time that my wife decided to embark on a new chapter in her life. On one of those group trips, one of the males in the group, someone I'd known for 20 years, opted to hold her hand and so began a year-long emotional affair. I could sense some pain in the back of my mind when she went out with our friends at the time, but I was so dead inside that I simply disregarded it. At the moment, I didn't want to deal with any more agony or anguish. We got through the first few months of this year, and I observed my wife growing more aloof and distant, but I was still in no position to confront her conduct emotionally. Then Cobb had struck. We were locked up for months, and she subsequently told me that she thought this would be the time for her and I to reconnect and rejuvenate our marriage. Unfortunately, I was still in the process of letting go of that professional life and I was first unable to bridge the gap. We began lockdown in April, and by June, she had chosen to leave me after she finished her degree. I had no notion, of course. I didn't have any employment during quarantine. Therefore, I had more opportunity to reconnect with my pals. My wife and I were invited to one of the men in the group's wedding, and it would be the first time in over a year that I would be able to see them all. I was overjoyed and had a terrific night, but my wife's AP was forced to confront what he was doing when I arrived. He began to cut off their interaction, and after a second gathering in the same month, he effectively cut it off completely. So now my 19-year-old wife is faced with many options. Her program was nearly over, her marriage to me was gone, and the relationship she planned to continue after she left me was also over. She still didn't have the confidence to tell me she was going since she needed my help to cross the finish line, but she needed to start laying the groundwork for her new life. She mentioned getting a job at the shore two hours away three weeks before she was supposed to take her boards and earn her license. She said that since there were no jobs in town, she could earn a lot of money at the shore and start working right immediately. She then said that she had an interview the next day. Of course, I disagreed and it was during that discussion-slash-argument that I realized we were no longer talking about my wife working at the seaside, but rather about her leaving me. I challenged her about what she was truly talking about, but she wasn't ready to shoot. I told her I loved her more than anything, but I wasn't going to beg her to remain. I told her she wasn't responsible for me, and that she didn't need to feel guilty, since I had cared for them for the previous twenty years. I just want to know what you intend to do so that I may begin putting my life back together. It took me a moment to gather my thoughts before the inquiry started. I accessed her computer and saw archived drafts of letters she had sent to AP during the previous year. I combed through all of her computer's options and realized she had stopped synchronizing all of her devices the previous year. I began fitting things together, and suddenly I discovered AP name. I was stunned at first, but then I realized, of course it was him. I scheduled therapy for us. But due to COVID, it had to be done through Zoom. I had emailed what I had discovered as well as my feelings to our counselor. We'd seen her for approximately 15 years, on and off, and she's the main reason my wife and I survived as long as we did. I was out driving around on the day of my wife's appointment, having a mental breakdown. I was shouting and yelling at the top of my lungs as I drove into the foothills outside of town. 
I felt bad for driving her away, and I felt responsible for our marriage demise. I felt as though I had defiled her and I wanted to die. I wanted to crash my pickup into a brick wall at 100 miles per hour. My wife phoned just as I was settling down and coming back home. I didn't respond since I couldn't speak. Our counselor used AP name during their session and my wife freaked out. My wife hadn't informed anybody about the affair and she was perplexed as to how our counselor knew. She opened my iPad and saw the proof I had taken from her PC. My wife was urgently contacting me to find out where I was because, wait for it, she was worried about AP. My wife inquires whether I have faced AP, to which I respond that I have not. She is terrified of me calling him and telling him it wasn't his fault and that he doesn't deserve this. What she forgets is that AP and I have been friends for 20 years and his betrayal is equally as bad as hers. This discussion follows the pattern of many others in that we settle, chat, and then vow to keep trying with one other. Stay tuned for the next part.